So you've finished editing your film. The picture looks great, but the sound still needs some work. This is where mixing comes in. Welcome to episode eight. The Indie Film Sound Guide is brought to you by premiumbeat.com. Exceptional production music for film and video. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is establish a listening volume you find comfortable. You can do this by simply choosing your favourite song and hitting play. Set the media player to full volume and adjust the volume of your headphones or speakers using the global volume control on your computer until you have a clear and comfortable level. Once we start mixing, we don't want to alter the volume of the headphones in order to hear certain tracks, but instead change the levels of that track inside the mixing or editing program. In order to keep a consistent listening volume, you can listen to the song after you return from a break, or if you've been mixing for more than a few hours. This trick gives you an indication of how loud your film should be. Without a reference to another audio sample, you can find yourself mixing too loud or too quiet. Currently, all I have on the timeline is the synced production audio, which is essentially just dialogue, so this is what we will tackle first. We want to separate the dialogue between characters for now. We can do this by arranging each character's dialogue to their own track. Next, we will set the dialogue levels so they sit comfortably between a range of minus 6 and minus 24 decibels when someone is speaking. You can see if your dialogue is too loud or too quiet by playing the track and looking at the levels meter. If the audio causes the meter to go beyond minus 6 decibels, bring it down until it sits just below this and play it again. If the dialogue doesn't reach minus 24 decibels, raise it up until it does. Now we need to fill in the silent gaps by combining dialogue tracks and adding room tone. I talk about room tone in a previous episode. I'll put a link on screen if you want to check it out. Dead silence doesn't occur in real life and it shouldn't in your scene either. If the dialogue is frequent, we can combine and crossfade tracks to fill in some of the silence before we start using room tone. Scrub along until you reach the end of a line of dialogue and pull the out point until we see something on the waveform, then cut it just short of this. Bring the in point of the next track just shy of the previous dialogue ending. As long as it's quiet at these points, it will equate to the same as room tone. If we combine the tracks together, it will crossfade the room tone, which already exists inside the dialogue track. You can use this technique if the dialogue is close together, but not overlapping. Before we place in any room tone, we need to figure out what level we should set our room tone to match the rest of the quiet parts in the scene. Play back your scene, listen to the parts where no lines are being delivered, and look at your levels meter. For my scene, the levels are hovering around minus 50 decibels, so we will set the room tone to the same level. This means when we do place down the room tone, we don't have to spend as much time adjusting the levels. To fill in the gaps with room tone, simply copy a chunk of it, cut it to size and place it in the silent parts. Apply crossfades between the audio files so you get a smooth transition with no hard stops. Then play back the dialogue and listen out for any quick changes in levels and smooth these out so they are audibly consistent. Some lines of dialogue, even after doing this, can still just be a little too quiet. If this occurs, you can add a few keyframes to the dialogue levels to create a hill or peak. The same goes with something that's just too loud. Just like a hill, you can create a valley to decrease the volume of loud points in a specific area. Next, we have foley art and sound effects. Firstly, we are going to tackle the cups, doors and the tapping. Now, these are easier to do first because they have a clear point of audio, they are quite loud and the sound also decays quite quickly. The first step here is as easy as it sounds. Simply listen to the recordings, find a suitable sound you would like to use, place it on the timeline and time it up. If you have any reference audio, this makes timing up even easier. For instance, I can insert the tapping sound effect directly under the scratch audio track, and once it's all timed up, I just delete the scratch audio, knowing it's perfectly in time. Once you have them all timed up, we can adjust the levels. Hard sound effects like these are typically quite loud, which means we will set the levels towards the higher end of the meter. The volume of the sound will depend on where it is in the scene in relation to our characters and the camera. If it's close to our subjects, such as the coffee cup and saucer sound effect in this scene, we can sit it between minus five decibels and minus 25. The sound effects you use will range, so just use your ears and find something that sounds comfortable and natural for that action. Now we will be adjusting the levels after everything's already placed in to compensate for any low sound effects compared to anything that's incredibly loud. Once you've got the levels sorted, add a fade to the beginning and end of each sound effect to smooth out the playback and add any peaks or valleys if further adjustment is needed. Next up, we have more intricate character movement foley. So just like the harder sound effects, the first step here is to listen to the recordings and find where you think it fits in the scene. Once you have everything in place, you'll want to set the noise bed of the foley so it is quieter than your room tone. 
For my scene, this was hovering around minus 45 decibels. During most of the clothing and movement sounds, it was hitting around minus 30, and at its highest, it hit minus seven when the chair creaked as Stu sits down. So this will change depending on the scene you are using, but just keep in mind that Foley should be audible, but not incredibly loud. You want it to exist in the scene, but you don't want it to overpower the other sound effects. Now we want to add some background ambience. For this scene, we have things like cafe machinery noises, steamers, coffee grinders, people taking orders, and also some customer chatter to fill the space around Stu and Frank. The scene isn't busy, but it's certainly not empty either, so a little chatter will go a long way. I found the Cafe Chatter track on freesound.org and mixed it with the machinery sounds recorded during wild takes. The levels for the background chatter are set below the scene's room tone, hovering between minus 50 and minus 40 decibels. Again, where you set your levels will depend on the scene. Now, with ambience, it should be loud enough to hear, but quiet enough so it doesn't distract from other sound elements. Now that we have basically everything in place for the scene, we can start adding in sound design elements to give the scene a more cinematic feel. In this scene, Frank is sitting, tapping on the table while his head is in another world. He is thinking about all the ways he can get out of his gambling debt so he isn't paying attention to the world around him. To emphasize this, we can get various sound elements and slowly raise the volume of them, bringing them into the scene. The first thing we can do is slowly fade out the ambient sound and room tone from the scene, leaving only the sound of him tapping on the table. This is to signify to the audience that because he's so invested in his own mind, his senses are going dull. Then we can transform the sound of his tapping into something that resembles a heartbeat. We can place the selected sounds onto another track, use an effect called a parametric equalizer, and cut the high frequency of the audio, leaving only a low bassy sound. Now, I'm certainly not an expert on EQ or plugin effects, so I'm not gonna go into much detail on this. I imagine if you give it a quick Google search, you're gonna be able to find someone a lot more equipped than I am. Because the stress is making him go a little mad, we can add a 1000 Hertz tone that slowly fades in. This is similar to sound effects used to simulate shell shock in war films. I also added a cinematic rumble sound effect to add some low frequency noise into the mix, which complements the high frequency of the 1000 Hz tone. Sound effects like these can be found online for free, just remember to get the royalty free material so you don't get sued for copyright infringement. The last sound design element I added into the scene was a dramatic hit. I reversed it, so instead of it being a hit, it becomes a crescendo, a slowly rising sound element which climaxes when Stu snaps Frank out of his daze with a pat on the shoulder. Now that we have everything on the timeline, timed up and leveled, we can play the entire composition and hear how it sounds. So with all the sound effects playing at the same time, you may notice some aren't as loud or as quiet when alongside others. Mixing is essentially giving each sound effect its own space in the composition. We don't want to drown out some sound effects altogether, so play with the levels until you can distinguish each sound effect in the composition. Before you settle on the mix, take a break and come back an hour later to listen to it again. You will be surprised what sticks out after you've given your ears a good rest. We'd like to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, PremiumBeat.com. Next time you need production music for your project, go pay them a visit. We've been using them for years now and they're a great source of high quality, royalty free tracks. Links in the description below. This was the final episode of the Indie Film Sound Guide. If you want to catch up on the first seven, you'll find links in the description. We also made an introduction video, which will give you an overview of the whole series. If there is anything we've missed, please leave us a comment below. We don't want to miss out on anything you think is essential to sound, and we'd love to make more episodes of the Indie Film Sound Guide in the future. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next week.